بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين نويت التعلم والتعليم والتذكر والتذكير والنفع والانتفاء والإفادة والاستفادة والحث على التمسك بكتاب الله وبسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والدعاء على الهداء والدلالة على الخير ابتغاء وجه الله ومرضاته وقربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته <coughs> الحمد لله we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every moment inshallah ta'ala as it deserves to be praised subhanahu wa ta'ala despite our heedlessness in that regard despite our ungratefulness in that regard, despite our lack of good consciousness in that regard, as we ought to have as it relates to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that, that he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is most worthy of praise, of most worthy of thankfulness, and he's worth, most worthy of being conscious of in every single moment of the slave, because the slave would not even have a moment of existence, let alone a moment of existence, being showered in the blessings of the divine except by the divine subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we forget him yet he never forgets us we are heedless of him yet he is never heedless of us that we are ungrateful and yet he is beneficent we are thankless and yet he is merciful that subhanahu wa ta'ala and yet he and we are in full need of him and he is in no need of us and we <clears throat> would not be except for him, and he is as he was and as he will be, regardless of us. Yeah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we are completely in need of him, and yet how detached we are from him. And he is absolutely in no need of us, and yet he sustains us in every single moment. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And thereby, thereby, we, we ought we ought to inshallah ta'ala seek to remind ourselves with that regard in that regard such that we inshallah ta'ala become people who are mindful of him subhanahu wa ta'ala who are mindful of him subhanahu wa ta'ala and we are thankful to him and who praise him subhanahu wa ta'ala not just with our tongue no doubt we must and not and not just with our actions and no doubt we must uh, but in, in with our intentions and in our souls and in our hearts, inshallah ta'ala, and this is the essence of spirituality, that in reality, that we come to the reality that there is no real ex there is no real existence except for the existence of the real subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. And there is no real power except for the power of the real subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is nothing real except for the real subhanahu wa ta'ala al haq subhanahu wa ta'ala and this inshallah ta'ala that we pray allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open our hearts to the realities of um of so uh, of um uh, that that which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed um in um for his creation that we pray that these divine divine realities is something not just that we talk about but rather that's something which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to experience not because we are worthy of such experiences but because we are desirous of such experiences because we seek the we seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we seek his bounties subhanahu wa ta'ala and there is no and there is the and th this is the only instance where there where there is no shame and there is no blame in seeking the bounties except from the divine subhanahu wa ta'ala uduuni yeah, astajib lakum ask me and i will respond call me and i will respond allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and he doesn't need to subhanahu wa ta'ala <laughs> So we carry on, inshallah ta'ala, in, in this journey of purifying our souls, inshallah ta'ala. We're continuing where we left off in the last class with regards to the book of Habib Abdul Rahman Bal Faqih, rahimahullah ta'ala, the spears of Islam, Iman, 
Ihsan and Irfan, wherein we are, yeah, we, we read the section on Sufism, we read the section of Sufism as it, requires, it relates to the sciences that one ought to know, um, uh, the Muslim ought to know, uh, that is necessary for the Muslim to know as it, as it relates to one's sojourning unto their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> We read the passage, but we didn't necessarily discuss it, discuss it completely, and we continue, inshallah ta'ala. Like Imam al-Ghazali mentions, the entirety of the science is for the obligatory upon every single one of us, for every single one of us, that for the one who seeks salvation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has clearly informed us of the criterion. The criterion is that we return unto him subhanahu wa ta'ala, with qalb salim, with a sound heart. And this is the criterion for felicity in eternity. So thereby, it so purifying our heart becomes the objective of our existence, objective of our existence, so that it can now approach the divine subhanahu wa ta'ala. It says that it can become a, respect, a receptacle for divine pleasure. It can become a receptacle, receptacle for divine light, for divine knowledge. For, thereby, we seek to purify ourselves in that regard. So the Imam says, the successful one is he who remains at the door waiting to receive the bounty of the bestower. If only we understood this statement, if only we understood this statement, then khalas, like, um, we, would, uh, we would take things in the right perspective. The successful one is he who remains at the door. That is success with regards to our efforts. That is all that we are required to do. Just stay at the door, waiting to receive the bounty of the bestower. The problem is what? Oh, I've been here for a long time now. I've been here for a good few years. When is the bounty going to come? When is the bounty going to come? If that th thought enters, that th thought enters the mind of the slave, the heart of the slave, then rest assured, you have not been there long enough. Why? Because you believe that you've been there long enough to deserve the bounty of the bestower. No one deserves the bounty of the bestower. Yeah. Otherwise, it wouldn't be called bounty. It would be called your wage. Yeah. Your remuneration. Yeah. Your, your, yeah. La it's, it's the bounty of the bestower. The problem is what? Oh, I've been here for such a long time. I've been I've been at the door for such a long time. Plus, I'm due. I'm due the bounty. Cave. Yeah, this is the problem. Success, the successful one is he who remains at the door. Plus, just be at the door. That is your success. Yeah. That whether the door opens or not, yeah. So long as you are at the door, the door will definitely open in the akhirah. Like there is no doubt, there's no two ways about it. So long as you spend your life at the door, the door will, without doubt, with absolute certainty, open in the akhirah. And that is the only thing that matters. That is the only thing that matters. Yeah. As for one who is at the door and he's fidgety. And he's impatient, and he's like fiddling his thumbs cave. Yeah. So the successful one is he who remains at the door. Just be at the door, khalas, waiting to receive the bounty of the bestower. I be full of hope. Hope in the bestower, not in your in the time that you have spent at the door, in how much you have knocked at the door. No, no, that no, no, not in your. You don't rely on your actions or any any anything of that sort. You rely on the mercy of your Lord Subhanahu Wa Taala. Yeah. So the successful one is he who remains at the door. Yeah. Doesn't matter if the door open for someone else. Alhamdulillah, Masha Allah. This gives you what? This should give you hope. Masha Allah, the door does open. It is, yeah, it was open. Alhamdulillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the person. Khalas, it should increase you now. MashaAllah, the door opens. Yeah. 
he knocks at the door through performing good deeds. I.e., your knocking at the door is through your deeds and draws near without attributing any value to his no deeds, knowledge and works. Yeah, for doing so leads to the biggest veil. Yeah, doing so, what prevents the door from opening? Yeah, the door opens only when, only when alas, the heart is purified. Yeah, only when the heart is purified. And so long as you attach any value to your own knowledge and your deeds, i.e. you attach value to yourself, is alas, is, is ujub. Yeah, is vanity. Yeah, and vanity, like the word itself is apt, isn't it? Vanity is in vain. Yeah, vanity is in vain. Yeah. The slaves' servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot be perfected as long as there remains in him anything that is for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, the slave servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our ubudiyah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, cannot be complete so long as there remains within us anything other than Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And a very easy sign for this is the, pre is the presence of sins within ourselves that we find ourselves sinning inwardly and outwardly. This is a sign. That khalas that we have within us other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in reality, in, a re in reality, from a perspective, that, that, like, that there is no doubt, that, that there, is a, um, there is benefit in this. Why? Because, because so long as we do what uh, we do, we deal with sin, the appropriate way, i.e. with regards to Tawbah and with regards to Istighfar and the, the conditions as to which relates to Tawbah, repentance, Tawbah to Nasuha and so on and so forth. There is good. Why? Because if sins were removed from a person before their heart was purified, that person khalas, is going to be doomed. That person is going to be doomed. Why? Because the person will be full of themselves, quite literally full of themselves. Yeah, their heart not purified yet. They have been class. They are not. They have not been tested with sins. So thereby now their heart is going to yeah arrogance yeah, uh, vanity. All of this is going to come in, no doubt. So the so sins are there to counteract that. Why counteract? Our heart not being pure, free from, um, our heart being not pure, uh, purified. So, so when our heart is purified, that we continue to strive, we continue to knock on the door, then halas, the point our heart gets purified, halas, sins get removed. Why? Because halas, there's no more need for the sin to keep us in check now. Because halas, we have been, we, we, have, we have put ourselves where we ought to be. Yeah, we have taken a rightful place as obedient slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wherein there is no need for sins to keep us in check. Yeah, so the sins are there. So long as we interact with sins as we ought to, they are there to serve a purpose. Why? Because our hearts are not purified yet. And if not for those sins, we couldn't, we wouldn't be in, we wouldn't be in check. We wouldn't be checked. Uh, yeah. So the so this is so he will not be able to drink from the pure spring of Sufi Sufism until he gives up his ego. The point, yeah, and any other master. So this is the point, yeah. So you'll you'll not attain this purification until your ego, your nafs, has been purified and you have given up any concern for any master other than Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So the only way to knock on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's door is in a state of impoverishment and desperate need. Yeah, not thinking, mashallah, Allah, I, like I'm worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at this high level of knowledge, of high level of uh, intention and sincerity. Khalas, la, la, <laughs> la, what kind of an arrogant slave is this? Yeah. 
What kind of an arrogance layer is this? Like the only way to knowledge which does not increase us in impoverishment and our and our awareness of our desperate need for Him, Subhanahu wa Taala, that is not knowledge which eliminates, but rather a poison which poisons. The, yeah. So the door is opened only is only open by consistently acting upon knowledge that draws one closer to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and by remembering Allah Subhanahu wa Taala constantly. And look, the Imam has not mentioned that the door being opened is not the sign of success. He's not mentioned that. Why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens for whoever he wishes, because for wishes at the time which is best for the slave. And all of us are different in that regard. But what did the Imam say? The successful one is he, had, he ascribes success to what? Remaining at the door and knocking, not the door opening. And this, this, if we understood this, then in reality we have understood spirituality. And if we have not understood this, then in reality we have not understood it. Yeah, that spirituality is what is persevering, yeah, staying, be remaining at the door and continue to knock at the door. That is spirituality. Door being opened and then khalas, what comes after, what comes that khalas, that's not for you. Yeah. The only person who enters is one who has freed himself from his ego and from pretension and does not attribute any power or strength to himself, i.e. he has been freed from the shackles of his lower self with regards to insincerity, with regards to vanity, with regards to ascribing any agents to any anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As this person now, Qalb Salim, <laughs> yeah? So flee unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for firmu ilallah. Yeah, so flee unto him subhanahu wa ta'ala. The path is extremely short for the truthful. In reality, in reality, if we were to think about it a moment, at every stage of our life, in every single moment, we have always been at the door. We have always been at the door. It's just that we never realized it and we never really knocked. Yeah, because if, if we were, if we re really thought about it, at any point in our life, we were only a moment's worth of reflection away from realizing that we are at the divine, the the door of the divine, such that we knock upon it. Yeah, that that, that is the truth. Because at every stage of our life. Like all we needed to do was reflect, and we reflected, and had we reflected, we would have turned back to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs> but the path in reality is extremely short. There, there is no place where you can be that you are distant from him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, such that you are so distant that you couldn't turn back to him, that you are so distant that you couldn't set right your affairs with him, that you are so distant that, 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 that there was no way back for you. La! In reality, you are always you have always been at the door. They have always been there. Just that we were not, we were just veiled from that fact. We were veiled from that fact. Certainly with true struggle comes the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah? I.e., in reality, what you what comes to you is not necessarily through your struggle, but in reality, it is from the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And with exertion comes his opening. Yeah? Allah, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not reactive with his creation. Says that you do something and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does something in reaction to what you have done. La, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not like that. Yeah? So in the so they the need to learn what we mentioned first, aqidah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not reactive at all, period. He does not react to his creation. Oh, you did this, look what I'm going to do to you. La. Oh, you did this, mashallah, I'm happy. La. That doesn't work like that. <laughs> yeah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows anything and everything about us. Yeah, much more, much, much more than we could ever comprehend about ourselves. Yeah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
Yeah. So so the openings which come are not in any way related to our exertion, even though we need our exertion, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to, to do it, to exert ourselves. The help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no way related to the to our struggle. Yeah. Says that it came because of our struggle. La, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us with struggle. The openings and the help comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not because we deserved it or we did something in that regard, but because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent it out of His grace and His mercy subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who strive hard for our sake, we will most certainly guide them to our ways. Yeah, so the, those who strive hard for our sake, yeah, what does this class? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the those who strive hard, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides such people, not because they strove hard, khalas, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had decreed that they will be the people who strive hard, and such that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in their striving hard, guided them to His ways, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Most assuredly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with those who do good, yeah. وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِيْنَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُلَنَا وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَمَعَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ The giver of the drink never stops giving people to drink. No one despires of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's bounty and mercy except people who disbelieve in Him. Yeah, and this should be, this is the affair of the believer that they never, never, ever despair from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of our absolute yaqeen that whatever it is, is in reality insignificant, no matter how down you feel, yeah, like how low you feel, like in the grand scheme of things, it's utterly insignificant. Like, first and foremost, we are utterly insignificant as it relates to the cosmos of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, we are not even a speck in His creation subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are utterly insignificant. And this temporal life, regardless of whatever happens, is utterly insignificant as it relates to the eternity to come for ourselves, from our perspective. So then what? Like what, what is there to despair about? For a Muslim who believes in this, khalas, what is there to despair about? Yeah. First and foremost, like we mentioned, we are insignificant as it relates to his creation, subhanahu wa ta'ala, let alone him. Like we are utterly insignificant. And as it relates to us in the lives that we live, our lives, this fleeting life is utterly insignificant as it relates to the eternity to come. So what is there to despair about? Like as it relates to us, we are like completely insignificant. Yeah? And that, Yeah, the, the eternity, class, as it, this life as it relates to the eternity, what, what significance does it have? And yet how, how our actions are governed by our concern for this life as it relates to the next. Yeah, the, the, yeah like, like we should be under no delusion in that regard. Our actions and our actions are generally, are generally, priorit they, they prioritize this life as opposed to the next. The, the best, the, the, the better amongst us, we, we will we'll try to do for the Akhirah so long as it doesn't compromise our dunya. Yeah, this is probably the better amongst us. Yeah. But the real people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala couldn't care for this life. I couldn't care. Like, like what? <laughs> yeah. You're going to strive and you're going to toil and you're going to exert yourself and you're going to shed blood, sweat, tears for what? For what? Yeah, you're going to go into your grave. And after that, nothing of this life is going to matter except for that which you did as it relates to the Akhirah. So what? What's the big deal? <clears throat> Many are the slaves who were once remote and subsequently received divine gifts and were brought near to him. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, yeah, for the mercy of our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Many are the deviant, disobedient slaves who have been saved by the hand of divine providence such that they attain the highest of honors and surpass their peers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ذَلِكَ فَضْلُ اللَّهِ يُؤْتِيهِ مَنْ That is the grace of the divine subhanahu wa ta'ala and he bestows it upon whoever he wishes subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. No one denies Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessing and bounty upon his slaves and shows enmity to his friends and people except for the one who is deprived. This is the one who is truly deprived. This is the one who is truly deprived. Why? Because they are deprived. Not, not necessarily in this life. Maybe they have plenty as it relates to this life, but they are deprived in the akhirah. They are deprived in the akhirah. Yeah? Because khalas, if you're going to have enmity with regards to the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yeah, and his awliya, khalas, yeah, how how do you think, well, what are you going to do? Like, does it befit such a person, does it befit such a person who in their heart looks down upon the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they have attained the rank with regards to the dunya? Khalas, mashallah, I'm such and such. I've 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 gone I've I've studied I'm, I have such and such qualifications yeah I've such and I'm from such and such uh, universities I have such and such class like what and you look down upon the people of Allah subhanahu wa taala like who are you you can't even speak English yeah as though English is the criteria <laughs> like yeah class. you look you look down upon the people of Allah subhanahu wa taala you mock them in your heart you 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 do not revere them in your heart. Khalas, what are you going to do Yawm Al-Qiyamah? What are you going to do Yawm Al-Qiyamah? Yeah? Yeah? Khalas, yeah? The, this is the affair of the one overcome by jealousy and one who wrongs his own soul. Yeah, this is in reality the travesty of the human being. Yeah? He is in a constant state of suffering and misfortune until he destroys himself with his own wrongdoing. And this, in reality, is, um, is in reality the punishment of disobedience, the punishment of wrongdoing, which one attains in this life, let alone in the next. That, that the, They'll never be content. Yeah? They'll never be satisfied. They'll never attain real happiness. There'll always be something missing. How many times have we heard this? Yeah. How many times have we heard this? People who have attained wealth, who have attained fame, who have attained status, authority, rank, power. Yeah. Ah, so something missing. This is not what it's about. This is not. Yeah. How many times have you heard this? Why? Because they could not. Like, like. The human being, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has created us that we will never find peace except with God subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah bi dhikrillahi tatuma'innu al-qulub. Yeah? Is, is, is it not with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the hearts find tranquility? Yeah? In reality, he has only oppressed himself, i.e. his deeds do not harm anyone other than himself in the, etern in, in the eternal abode. Yeah? He does not harm anyone he envies in any way. Rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases the one he envies in merit and completes his favor upon him. This has always been Allah's way of dealing with his prophets, his friends and his people. Yeah, Because the one who envies and the one who thereby acts upon his envy with regards to um, seeking to harm other, the one he envies, or seeking to um, slander or backbite the one they envy, or in any way seeking to harm them in general. Unless all, all this does is increases them in the akhirah, increases them in the akhirah. Yeah. Look, at all, look at the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yeah? the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every single moment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increasing them through their enemies. Yeah? Incre Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases people through their enemies. <laughs> yeah, In reality, where they do not harm anyone but themselves. Those who have a problem with Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. <laughs> Alas, 
Yeah, they spent their lives elevating Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu in the Akhirah. Whereas they're digging themselves a deeper hole in the Akhirah. Likewise, those who have a problem with Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu spend their lives elevating Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu in the Akhirah. At the same time, digging for themselves a deeper hole. Anyone who has a problem with Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu anha, our mother, all they do, they spend their entire lives elevating Sayyidatina Aisha radiallahu anha in the Akhirah, at the same time digging themselves for themselves a deeper hole. Hakada, the people who have enmity with the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in reality, all they do is they elevate them in the Akhirah in eternity while they dig for themselves a deeper hole. Yeah, this has always been Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's way of dealing with his prophets, alayhim as -salam, his friends, ridwanullahi alayhim, and his people, people ajma'in. Yeah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Khair, inshallah. I was just thinking with, with the the people who are really present at the door, they they never feel that they've they, they never it never crosses well they never feel that the door should open for them because I was thinking of the example of Abu Bakr radiallahu for example he said he was he would never feel safe even if he had one foot in paradise. Um, and Omar radiallahu anhu, who, who was convinced that he was a hypocrite, yet our actions is insignificant compared to to those great people, and and yet we feel we deserve for the door to, mm. to open. Mm. Um, and then subhanallah, it's um, and perhaps the the other thing that I was thinking about was um whenever these thoughts cross the mind, cross our minds, then it's about thinking of those people who are more pious and if they are still looking at their actions, looking at what they're constantly striving to do, this, they're, they're still doing all of this and, and they're still at the door. And what, why should we, what, why should the door be open for us? You know, we're still so far away from, um, even people were still blessed to be in the presence with at the, of, of at the moment. <laughs> there, there, there's, there's a slight nuance there. There's the, no, the nuance is feeling that the door must be opened because you mm. deserve it to be open. Like, at the same time, you have hope that the door will be open, not because of yes. yourself or your actions, but because of his mercy, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. So, so at every moment we are play, praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open the door and we are hopeful in that regard. Yes. Not because of ourselves, but in spite of ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so that's what the, the, the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say. Like if you do not believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within a, in an instant can rectify you, then you have no idea with regards to the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's not because you deserve to be rectified in the moment. That's not the point. The point is khalas, like, like you, you have hope with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of him, not because of you. Okay? So, so, so it's not that we, 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 we feel that the door should be opened because we deserve it, but rather we hope that the door is opened out, out of his mercy subhanahu wa ta'ala. Out of his bounty, his grace. Yeah? No, definitely. Yeah. Bismillah. Khair, inshallah, let's carry on a little bit. Yeah? Let's read, read ahead a bit. Bismillah. Yes, please, Muhammad. The sciences. The sciences of the Quran and Sunnah. As for the sciences of the Quran and Sunnah, they are the foundation of the previously mentioned sciences and the basis of their realization and the means of attaining their branches. Someone who studies the other sciences therefore needs them. He needs to know the merits of the scholars of the sciences of the Quran and, the, and Sunnah 
and their application of texts which are explicit and implicit. He then needs to act on the injunctions of the Quran on the basis of sound faith. The scope of his knowledge then expands through the sciences that have been narrated by word and sound cl clarification. He will attain illumination and tranquility of heart through recitation of the Book of Allah and understanding its content, reading the narrations of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and learning their meanings and studying the lives of the companions and the followers, standard bearers of the religion and those that are loyal to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They are Allah's pious slaves. Upon mention of them, mercy and tranquility descends and one's heart becomes fully focused on Allah. The Arabic language. The sciences of the Arabic language are necessary tools for comprehending the speech of Allah and the speech of his messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Knowledge of them ensures that this speech remains in the way it was revealed and conveyed without any errors or alterations. They are excellent tools since by using them the successful attain the object of their desire. So, so we've looked at the different aspects of the sciences which the Imam has enumerated firstly as a, with regards to creed or belief, i.e. the science of Aqeedah, and secondly with regards to the law or jurisprudence as it relates to the science of fiqh, and then thirdly with regards to spirituality or purification as it relates to the science of tasawwuf. So now the Imam mentioning as it relates to, i.e. he's basically summarizing it and bringing our focus to a few key things, which unfortunately we many a times don't pay enough attention to. We do not pay enough attention to. Why? Because we stop seeing the wood for the trees. Yeah. As for the sciences of the Quran and the Sunnah, they are the foundation of the previously mentioned sciences and the basis for the realization and the means of attaining their branches. Yeah. So, i.e., the one engaging with these sciences of aqidah, of fiqh, and of tasawwuf, that one should not forget that ultimately they are all rooted, firmly rooted in the Quran and the Sunnah. Yeah, because the Quran and the Sunnah are foundation for the previously mentioned sciences and our engagement with those sciences is incomplete and deficient if we are not engaging with the Quran and the Sunnah on the basis of these sciences. If we just take these sciences, if we just take these sciences at a basic level, which suffices us as it relates to the legal obligation, but at the same time not necessarily engage with the Quran and the Sunnah on that basis, then no doubt there is a deficiency because we are ultimately, we are removed. Yeah, we are removed, we are detached in a sense from the Quran and the Sunnah. I.e., we should, uh, our study of Aqeedah should be, help us become rooted, grounded in the Quran and the Sunnah. Our study of Fiqh should help us become grounded in the Quran and the Sunnah. Our study of Tasawwuf should help us become grounded in the Quran and the Sunnah and not make us detached from them. Yeah, which unfortunately in today's day and, today's day and age, we're just, yeah, obsessed with the science, but not really and appreciating what, what, how does this fit in the bigger picture? Yeah, how does this fit in the bigger picture? So someone who studies the other sciences therefore needs them. Yeah, therefore needs them. Why? Because these are not disparate, disjointed subjects, but rather all of them come together in the Quran and the Sunnah. All of them come together in the Quran and the Sunnah. Yeah, one of the beautiful traditions which I heard of in, in the Kutab of the North Africa, in these uh, madrasas, in the madaris of Northern Africa, 
is how they learn their religion, how the children, the, from, the, how they, from a very young age they learn their religion, they go to the Qutab, which if in, in an oversimplification of the uh, word, term, is that they go to memorize the Quran, but they don't just memorize the Quran, but in reality learn the entirety of the religion whilst being grounded in the Quran and the Sunnah. So the, the, each one of them has a tablet, like a wooden tablet or a slab or something, on which the teacher relates to them the word, some verses of the Quran, beginning, however it is that they begin, the are on typically five verses, which is the sunnah that they would write down the verses. So they write write it out, yeah, and then they memorize those verses. They memorize those verses, yeah, and then the teacher would explain to them the meanings of those verses, i.e., tafsir, and then potentially other teachers would take them through the grammar, the the ling linguistic nuances of those. Versus with as it relates to grammar, as it relates to morphology, as it relates to rhetoric, uh, rhetoric, and so on and so forth. And then for, potentially under the teacher would take them through the uh, legal implications of those verses. Under the teacher would take them through uh, the creedal implication of those verses. Another potentially, uh, and then they'd be taken through uh, the spiritual implication of those verses. That be taken through uh, the ahadith, which relate the sunnah, which relates to those verses. Yeah, thereby they study those verses, and by studying those verses, they study the implication of those verses in all the different sciences of the religion, and and they study the seerah as it relates to those verses. Yeah, the asbab al nuzul. Yeah, and then and then once they have done that, they move to the next set of verses. So thereby, they, they memorize the Qur'an in that manner, and in that manner, in reality, they, they study the entirety of, they study all the sciences as it relates to the religion, while being rooted in the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah? Whereas in, in today's day and age, khalas, yeah? Like we find people, we find people, khalas, like it's very easy to bypass the Quran and the Sunnah. Just take the sciences. Yeah, you just want to learn the sciences. Very easy to bypass the Quran and the Sunnah. Yeah. Kaif. How is that? Yeah. He needs to know the merits of the scholars of the sciences of the Quran and the Sunnah and their application. Of texts which are explicit and implicit. He then needs to act on the injunctions of the Quran on the basis of sound faith. Yeah. So khalas, the, their knowledge of the Quran and the Sunnah. So our knowledge of the Quran and Sunnah should bring us to actions on the basis of the law, divine law, and on the basis of sound faith. A sound faith. Yeah. Um, so the the scope of his knowledge then expands through the sciences that have been narrated by word and sound clarification, i.e. that we should make the Qur'an and the Sunnah the basis for our knowledge, as opposed to just engaging with the sciences, just engaging with the sciences, uh, without necessarily grounding ourselves in the Qur'an and the Sunnah, that we become... Like, like, like we, we, we that we become people who have um necessary who have who have spent good great deal of time and effort in one or many of the sciences of the religion yet we are not grounded in the Quran and the Sunnah there's something fundamentally problematic with regards to that there's something fundamentally incorrect with regards to that. The scope of his knowledge, uh, uh, he will attain illumination and tranquility of heart through first and foremost reciting yeah, Iqra, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and understanding its content of al Quran, reading the narrations of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and learning their meanings and studying the lives of the companions and the followers. 
the standard bearers of the religion and those who are loyal to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiallahu anhum ajma'een. Yeah, so this is the essence that we take religion in its context. Yeah, with context, we don't take religion out of context. Yeah, and the context of the religion first and foremost is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the context of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And all of this, yeah, the, 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 and we make this relatable to us through the lives of the companions of the Allah through the tabi'een, through those who came after them, who followed them in excellence, وَمَنْ تَبِعَهُمْ بِإِحْسَانٍ إِلَى يَوْمِ الدِّينَ and those who followed them in excellence until the end of time, Khalas, these are those who allow us to contextualize the, the, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yeah? They are Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pious slaves. Upon mention of them, mercy and tranquility descends and on heart, one's heart becomes fully focused on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The best of yous are those when they are mentioned, people are reminded of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When they, in their presence, people are reminded of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have the best of people. They are the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thereby, Imam stressing what? Yeah, usually people stop at this. People say, Khalas, you do your aqidah, you do your uh, fiqh, and you do your tazkiyah. The people usually stop just at aqidah and fiqh. And then, so those who are concerned with spirituality, they mention spirituality. And then the imam mentioning what? That which is critical. Khalas, you, you need to have a personal connection with the Quran and you need to have a personal connection with the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam such that this provides context for that which you have taken from the other sciences. Yeah, this is what gels them all together. This is what brings everything together. And this is essential in that regard. Yeah, and then the Arabic language. Masha Allah. <laughs> yeah. MashaAllah, the Imam, rahimahullah ta'ala, he's mentioning the Arabic language as it relates to spirituality, i.e., you want to surgeon unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like, how are you going to do it without the language of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, without the language of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how is it that you're going to surgeon unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The sciences of the Arabic language are necessary tools for comprehending the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the speech of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Knowledge of them ensures that this speech remains in the way it was revealed and conveyed without any errors or alterations. Yeah, so knowledge of Arabic is essential for us to do what? At a very basic level to understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, isn't it? And that is the point, isn't it? Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, <laughs> Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling you the reason he's is, is telling us, the reason he revealed the Quran in Arabic is so that we can understand it, isn't it? And then anyone who claims who claims to, to to take the affair seriously, how can they not learn Arabic? How, how can you claim that you have taken the affair seriously and you have not made any serious attempt to learn Arabic? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling you that he revealed his book in Arabic so that you can understand it. Okay, how? how? Yeah, it does not follow. It does not follow at all. Yeah? <laughs> So thereby, like for us, for us, like the Imam mentions, for us to have a personal connection with the Book of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, a personal connection with the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Arabic is a must. Yeah, Arabic is a means of drawing close into Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Yeah, in a manner which cannot be like like, like that which Aqidah gives you, no other science can give you. That which fiqh gives you, no other science can compensate for that. Likewise, that which 
the spirituality gives you tasawwuf, no other science can compensate for that. Likewise, that which Arabic gives you, no other science can call you. There is no way you can compensate for not knowing Arabic except by learning Arabic. There is no other way. Yeah? There you go. Yeah? They are excellent tools since by using them, the successful attain the object of their desire. Like what kind of spirituality are we talking about? If, like in the life that you envisage for yourself, in whatever time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give you, of you know, whatever period of time, that you do not envisage yourself at some point that you engage with the Quran on the basis of understanding, that you read the Quran and you understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you. If that is, if we cannot envisage that, then what kind of spirituality do we envisage for ourselves? That at a very basic level, we cannot understand the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, then what kind of spiritual progression are we envisaging for ourselves? What are, oh, what kind of sojourning unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are we envisaging for ourselves? Thereby, Arabic language, essential. <laughs> yeah. Like subhanallah, the other day was like uh, Abdul Hamid the second, rahimahullah ta'ala, yeah, um, uh, of the last great writers, um, khalifas of this ummah, uh, yeah, the, the, that of his, uh, of the efforts that, of, of this firm intentions that he had for the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, that, that he wanted, and he, and he was working towards making Arabic the language of the entire Ummah. Yeah, that, that he wanted everyone from the Ummah to be able to, to, to know Arabic. Yeah. And he himself not an Arab, is he? Look. Yeah. He, no one can claim, oh, he was an Arab, so he wanted to make everyone learn Arabic. La, he was a Muslim. He was a Muslim, that's why. Yeah. It's not, it's, it was not an affair of tribalism. It was not an affair of race or ethnicity. It's an affair of faith in and of itself and the very essence of it. Yeah, alas. Like anyone who wants to take the affair seriously, Allah Ta'ala Alam, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala knows best how they can do so without Arabic. This is just like completely mind boggling. Yeah, alas. Khair, inshallah Ta'ala. So we'll do the Imam's summary, inshallah Ta'ala. In the next class, is there any thoughts, comments, or questions before we finish? Any thoughts, comments, or questions before we finish? And inshallah, Taala. We'll finish there and carry on next week, inshallah. اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وفقهنا إذا جهلنا ورزقنا علما نافيا وعملا متقبلا خالصا لوجهك الكريم وافتح علينا فتوح العارفين والحقنا بإبادك الصالحين وجعلنا من خدمة هذا الدين وجز الله عنا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما هو أهله وجزاكم الله كل خير والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Yeah, come on, come on,